My name is Pascal. I'm a Christian by faith. I'm 69 years old. I'm a MSc postgraduate in mathematics. I'm a retired college lecturer from a government engineering college. Now, you quoted from the Acts of the Apostles what Peter addressed to the people. Now, the same Peter says in John 6, chapter 67, 68, 69, then Jesus said to the 12, do you also want to go away? Then Simon Peter answered unto him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then Christ said, Blessed are those, Simon, but Jonah, it is not flesh and blood that has revealed it to you, but my Father himself who is in heaven. Now, to your question, I answered this question. I got here 25 points to your question. Who can say that Christ claimed himself to be the Son of God? I have here 25 instances, but I don't waste no time. I need a public debate with you if you are ready to agree. Not just one day. Yes, seven day public debate with you. I can contradict every statement of yours, what you said about Christianity, and with my and maintain my stance. Pastor, my dear pastor. No, Pascal. My dear pastor has asked a good question. No, Pascal. He's quoted the Gospel of John, and he quoted that Peter said that Jesus Christ was Son of God. I'll answer this. Your remaining 24 points, my student will answer. <laughs> there are thousands of people in the world who want to debate with me. What I say, there's a criteria for me to debate. I'll come to that afterwards. First, I will answer your question. First, I'll answer your question. You quote from Gospel of John that Peter said, Jesus Christ was Son of God. Brother, my statement was, if you remember, I will repeat it, there is not a single unequivocal statement, not a single unambiguous statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says, worship me. I want to add, and including you, if any Christian can point out a single statement from any version of the Bible, any unambiguous statement, any unequivocal statement where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God or worship me. Three words. I am God or worship me. Two words. I am ready to accept Christianity today. That is a I am place. ready to put my head on the guillotine. I am not speaking on behalf of my other Muslim brothers. They may not be well versed in the Bible. Now what you quoted to me is not fulfilling my criteria. Yet I will answer. What you quoted is Peter saying that Jesus Christ is son of God. Brother, do you know in the Bible, there are sons by the tons. God has got sons by the tons. Adam was son of God. Ephraim was son of God. Israel was son of God. All those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. So son of God is a word used in the Bible, means a person who follows the teachings of God Almighty. If you follow the teachings of God Almighty, according to the Bible, you are also son of God. If I follow the teachings of God, I am son of God. If you read in the Romans, chapter number 8, all those that are led by the Spirit of God are called sons of God. So what is new about it? I will help you. I will help you. Your 24 points, inshallah. Your 24 points, my student will reply. I will help you. You know, Christian missionaries say, no, 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 no. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is not normal son. He is the begotten son. And they quote, Gospel of John. Chapter number 3, verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth in him shall not die, but have everlasting life. Whether this verse I'm quoting from King James Version. It's in red letter. For God so loved the world. He has given his begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall have everlasting life. Now this word begotten son, which is there in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16, in the King James Version. Brother, are you listening to me? Yes. Yes. If you can't do two things at the same time, then you say, I did not listen. Yes, yes, I listen. So when, how can you read and listen at the same time? Are you I, a superhuman being? I just refer to answer to your question. Whether you listen to me, you can have a debate with my student. You come no. to Bombay? Yes, I want to debate with you. With me, you're not about debating, brother. Yes. I'll come to it later on. So the begotten son is, begotten means sired by God. Begotten means it's a lower function of animal sex. It's an insult to Almighty God. So that's the reason in the revised standard version, revised by Thaidu scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different corporate and Christian denominations, they said 
that this word begotten in Gospel of John chapter 3 verse number 16 was the interpolation, was the concoction, was the fabrication and they threw it out of the Bible. Who? Not Muslims, not Hindus, Thaidu scholars of the highest eminence backed by 50 different corporate denominations in the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, RSV. They have removed this word begotten as the interpolation, as the fabrication, as the concoction. So if you say son of God, I verily agree that Jesus Christ was son of God, meaning he was a godly person. Where do I disagree? But he never claimed he was God. As far as your other part, 24 questions that you have, you want to debate me? If you want to debate me, there are some criteria. There are some criteria. I wouldn't mind debating anyone who on his own can at least gather 10,000 people. If you can give a public lecture. For your public lecture, if you can gather 10,000 Christians, I will debate you. Anyone in the world, or you give your material to your doctors of divinity. You know Billy Graham? Billy Graham can gather more than 100,000 people. Billy Graham, Morris Cirello, give these people. Who are you? I don't even know you. Why should I waste my time? You want to debate? Yet you can debate. Come to Bombay, take an appointment, my student will debate with you. And answer all your 24 points. We have many students in the queue, waiting. There are many such people who challenge me, we say for debate with my student. If anyone wants to debate me, when by God's grace, Alhamdulillah, I can gather 100,000 people, 200,000 people, 300,000 people individually for my talk, at least the person debating me should have a stature of getting at least 10,000 people. If you cannot gather 10,000 people, it's a waste of my time. Why should I make you famous? Yet, you can have a debate with my student. Many people are there. You know the students of our school also, inshallah. You are 69 years old, no problem. My young students will debate you. Fine? Tell me when you're coming. You can come there. Hire the hall. You pay for the thing, fine? If you are someone great, we'll pay for you. If you can't gather 10,000 people, you come there, arrange for a hall, call my student for a debate, we'll have a debate. If you want to tell the date, you can announce now only. Which date are you coming to Bombay, brother? Pastor, which date are you coming to Bombay? Tell me. I have to gather the audience, you know, then I'll tell you. No audience. You coming alone, no problem. When 10,000 people, then you debate with me. First, at least debate with my student. You gathering audience will take you a lifetime. I don't know how long I, will you live. I so what want I want you to, to do... Answer your I want to answer your questions. Not my questions, my student will answer. Now. My students are well-versed, no, Pastor. No, no, no. They when, cannot... can you, when can you come to Bombay? Most welcome. Give a time. I will arrange my student to debate you. If you cannot debate my student, and you cannot gather 10,000 people, so why should I waste my time? What you can do is ask a question. You asked a question, I gave the reply. Now you can go behind the queue for your next question. Behind the queue, yes, brother.